Alright, what's happening y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we're coming with a stock up, stock down report after that just heart-wrenching loss to the Titans right there. They just fold at the end of the game like that. It's crazy, but it's not all negative. There were a lot of positives to take away from that game as well, so that's why we do five stock ups, but of course with an L like that, we have plenty of stock downs, but I try to choose from the many stock downs that I could choose from and try to take the five priorities out of them, including one player that got benched. Of course, it's Rico Street score so we're going to include advanced statistics in this video talking about some of the stock ups and stock downs and also i will reference everybody's pro football focus grades for the game but i disagree with some of the grades now granted i've only seen the game live i haven't gone back and rewatched it yet i haven't seen all 22 on it so even though i disagree with some of the pro football focus grades right now that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm right or pro football focus is right but i always like to include that just as a reference point just for people to know i think it's interesting to keep track of even though you should take it with a grain of salt and these grades don't absolutely mean everything but just saying all of that to let you know that i am not basing my five stock ups and five stock downs on their pro football focus grades that's being included after i already have my list of 10 players that i wanted to discuss but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday for the during the game live streams where i break down everything that's going on live play by play reacting to everything and then also make sure you pull up for the post game live stream i won't be able to do it tonight but i probably will have a chance to do it tomorrow so we'll probably have a post game live stream where y'all call in on tuesday this time but without further ado let's get it All right, so let's start with the stock up. I think we should start on a good note. First of all, obviously, Deami Brown. Deami Brown absolutely balled out, man. He led our team in reception yards with 105 off of two receptions from four targets and two touchdowns, the longest one being 75 yards. Literally the first play of a drive after a touchback. Great throw by Carson Wentz there as well. But Deami Brown had himself a game. Pro Football Focus agrees too. He's our literally the highest grade on offense for our entire team. The only grade on our offense above a 78, and he's a 90 overall, almost a 91, a 90.9. The second highest grade on the entire team, including the defense, was Cameron Curl with a 78.7. That's the closest one. So they felt like Deami Brown was clear and by far our best player, even though they gave him a 31.5 run block grade, but that's not why we necessarily brought him here. It's that ability to beat guys deep. Like a lot of us have been saying, he's kind of like the Aldrick Robinson, where he's going to toast people occasionally. I think he has a higher ceiling than that. I think once he learns how to separate a little bit and now that he's starting to gain some confidence i think that's the most important part of this game granted you prefer to have Jahan dawson and maybe we score that game winning touchdown at the end of the game if Jahan dawson is there but long term giving deami brown these opportunities and building his confidence up i think this is going to make him a way better player i think when he prepares throughout the week going into every practice every film session on, on weekdays and things like that he's going in with more confidence like i can do this so now based off of what i've done I've seen that I have enough speed to make plays at the NFL level, not just at the college level for UNC. I think that's going to pay dividends long term for him. So this was a great game for him again. First of all, because of how well he played in the game, and I'm happy for him. But I think this is definitely going to make him a better player moving forward. Because again, once you break that ice and you know you can do it at the NFL level, you've seen it, you've done it. I think that's going to be huge for him moving forward. So I'm really happy. Of course, we could talk about different like film session things like route running all that type of stuff but i really just want to take the time to congratulate him on his big like performance debut he was doing this all throughout training camp and then we get to the preseason and he looks skittish he's scared to catch the ball he's not separating from guys he can't hold on to the ball when it's thrown towards him but now it looks like in the regular season he's finally put it into gear Jahan Dawson was out he got his opportunity he made the most of it shouts out to De'Ami Brown man now second I have Montez Sweat man and he was balling now pro football focus feels like he didn't play that well they gave him a 74.2 overall grade which is like pretty good but not great I felt like live it looked like he played way better than that grade they gave him an 82 run defense which is interesting 
they gave him a 75 tackling and then his lowest grade from his entire performance is his pass rush grade with a 73.5 which isn't bad all of those grades are good and technically his run defense grade is is great with 82.2 but i'm surprised his pass rush grade is that low because he was out there getting pressures he got a couple of sacks and even when he wasn't doing one of those he was forcing the holding penalty and there was sometimes he was held and it wasn't even called now he did allow that one ryan Tannehill crazy first down where montez sweat was draped all over him somehow i think it was even third down too he found a way to get the ball out of his hand for a first down and i think that eventually led the points and so you could probably say that was montez sweat's biggest fail of the day it was a good 99 percent of the play but that last one percent was huge because again i believe the titans ended up scoring on that drive after that ridiculous chaos that whatever that was you want to call that that miracle play that they had but other than that i feel like montez sweat again live i'm gonna have to go back and look at the all 22 and rewatch the game a couple of times to really look at specific guys like every play type of stuff throughout this week but i really felt like montez sweat balled out I, I thought from everything that I saw, again, even his run defense was really good, even according to Pro Football Focus. I thought this was a great game for him. This is definitely his best game of the season so far. I've been waiting for this from him all season. I've been waiting for this from him for years now, and I'm happy that we're finally starting to get it. Now, granted, it's one game. Same thing with De'Ami Brown. I'm going to need to see De'Ami Brown and Montez Sweat do this consistently. Cameron Curl balls out consistently. I want to see this consistently from these guys, and that's the main reason they're in these stock ups because – Cameron Curl, we're going to talk about him a little later because he is in the stock up, but I usually don't want to put a guy like that in the stock up because they always ball out. This is more so like guys that improved or guys that had a better game than you expected. So hopefully we get to the point where De'Ami Brown and especially Montez Sweat is balling out to the point that he's not even on this list because we know how well they're supposed to play and they go out there and do that game by game. Just like Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne who are not included in my five stock ups even though they balled out in my opinion. Even though Pro Football Focus disagrees they have Jonathan Allen with a 58.3 grade and Deron Payne with a 61. Then Jamin Davis. Now, this is the one where I disagree with them probably the most. They gave him a 46.7 grade, but I liked a lot of what I saw from him in the run defense. In coverage, I thought he was pretty excellent, honestly. I mean, that one Derrick Henry catch for like eight yards to the one yard line that set them up for a touchdown, that was just a professional throw to a veteran running back from a veteran quarterback against a young linebacker great coverage that throw was literally only where Derrick Henry could get it and somehow it's just not fair that a guy that big and that can run that well can also make a catch like that in the open field that was just unfair and I felt like even on that play he had great coverage and outside of that play I felt like he covered well I mean he was with guys step for step for some incompletions so I don't know pro football focus didn't like him but again I disagree I loved what I saw from him of course one of his highest grades is his tackle and his pass rush ability I feel like every time we blitz him he makes plays I want to blitz him more I feel like Jack DeRio has been doing a better job than I expected this season even though it doesn't necessarily seem like it but if you really pay attention Jack DeRio a lot of this is not really his fault I mean he could be better there's a lot of defensive coordinators out there that are better than him but he hasn't been terrible and he's been putting Jamin Davis in some favorable situations but I wish that he would blitz him a little bit more because every time Jamin Davis blitzes it seems like it works out now Jamin Davis the biggest problem he had against the Titans was on screens whenever there was a screen play he got abused it's including that one touchdown the first touchdown of the Titans game that Derrick Henry had on the screen they had John Bostick on the field they threw a screen John Bostick got pancaked they put him back on the sideline through Jamin Davis out there he didn't get pancaked but he did get hemmed up well enough for Derrick Henry to be able to basically just breeze into the end zone so Jamin Davis outside of that screen I felt like played very well but maybe that's why he has that really low pro football focus grade but I'm really happy that Jamin Davis is building on his great game from the Cowboys I feel like that Cowboys game last week was his best game of his NFL career by far and I feel like this wasn't necessarily far from it he's starting to look like somewhat of a first round pick he doesn't look like a first round pick certified yet but he's starting to show that he could be somewhat consistent and he's showing enough flashes to where you're like okay I mean he may never live up to the exact pick that he was taking 
but he's finally looking like a player that actually makes plays and matters for this defense and like if he were to get hurt and be out we would definitely notice it I mean replacing him with John Bosick I'm telling y'all you think Jamin Davis isn't having good games wait till knock on wood but if Jamin Davis gets hurt you'll see how much of an impact Jamin Davis has had even in the run defense category he's been making plays man I'm telling y'all and then four I have left tackle Charles Leno he held it down man I felt like he had a pretty good game he was our most consistent offensive lineman I felt like Cornelius Lucas played fairly well overall I felt like Sadiq Charles played fairly well as well definitely better than what anything we would have gotten from Trey Turner anyway but Charles Leno was easily our most consistent offensive lineman Pro Football Focus agrees too. He was our highest graded offensive lineman with a 77.5 overall grade. They gave him an 86.8 pass blocking grade, which is probably one of the highest out of the entire NFL over the course of the weekend. So that's pretty cool. And then run blocking grade is 62.7, but I'm not mad at that because we know him more so for his pass blocking than his run blocking. So I'm not surprised. But again, I felt like if you're one of our more consistent offensive linemen, then I feel like you deserve to automatically pretty much be a stock up because we need that. We need that from all of these guys. I wish everybody else was as consistent as Charles Leno. I think he did have like one penalty in the game, but I'm not mad at it, man. I mean, he didn't allow any pressures, no hits, no sacks, no nothing on 63 offensive snaps and 43 of them were pass blocking. That's very impressive because meanwhile, you got Cornelius Lucas allowed two hits, one hurry, which is three pressures. Andrew Norwell allowed two sacks and one hurry. That's three pressures. Sadiq Charles allowed one hit and one hurry, two pressures. And Nick Martin allowed two hurries, which is two pressures. So Charles Leno was the only offensive lineman out there that didn't allow a single pressure. Everybody else at least allowed two. So that should tell you everything you need to know. And then lastly, Cameron Curl, obviously our highest graded defender. And like I said, guys that are really consistent, I really don't want to include them on the stock ups because it's more so like who went out there and performed better than you expected or at least better in the circumstances that they're dealing with because the fact that Charles Leno played that well with everybody around him, especially the guys directly next to him playing so poorly, I felt like that was very noteworthy. But Cameron Curl, I mean, I just felt like he played too well to not include him. He again, he's our highest graded defender of the entire day with a 78.7 grade. His highest grade is his coverage with a 7. 76.5 tackling is a 74.2 and run defense is a 68.2 but again use those pro football focus grades as a reference but definitely take it with a grain of salt again from what i saw live i loved what i saw from cameron curl every time i saw him even on the screen it looked like he was making a play whether it be run defense or coverage absolutely love him he's a gym he's severely underrated i can't wait for us to find a true safety to put alongside him i love what Derek forrest does but if we can get like a pure rangy free safety type of guy to help on the back end so camera curl can do what he does in the box and pretty much everywhere in the secondary not even just in the box but even on the back end at times i think he could play even better if he has less to worry about so i'm really hoping percy butler can become that guy because bobby mccain clearly isn't that guy right now he's too slow i don't know how he got lost in that play but we're going to talk about that because we're definitely going to get to him in the stock downs speaking of that let's go ahead and go to the stock downs now shouts out to Cameron curl for being so consistent literally since he came back the Detroit Lions game and the Cowboys game through those two weeks he was the highest graded safety by pro football focus over those two weeks literally out of the entire NFL now granted against the Titans not a 90 something grade like he was averaging over those past two weeks but still our best defender on the field according to pro football focus and you can definitely agree with that he's he was at least one of our best defenders there just from looking at the game live but now going to the stock downs you have bobby mccain gotta start with that i mean how do you get lost like that on that play that deep bomb our defense generally played well outside of that one just really bad d-bomb i mean they barely converted third downs how many third downs did they convert i think they went like four for 13 as a team or something like that like our four or 14 they only converted four of their 14 third down attempts now granted our offense only converted one of 11 so our offense was like terrible even worse than the titans offense but our defense like actually played pretty well for the most part now the titans literally have the best red zone offense in the nfl by far i think they're like 90 something percent almost 100 percent in the red zone getting touchdowns and everybody else is like 50 percent or lower it's something crazy like that like they're just by far the best red zone team in the nfl so once they got to the red zone it was pretty much a wrap they were getting touchdowns our defense just had to do a better job of keeping them from getting there and unfortunately that's a bad matchup because we seem to be somewhat of a bend but don't break type of defense 
defense, especially until we get a playmaker like Chase Young back, then maybe we'll start being one of those disruptive defenses that gets more turnovers and things like that. But right now we're kind of a bend but don't break. And we're doing a pretty good job, like I said, of getting off the field on third down. So overall defense played pretty well outside of that big Bobby McCain play where he just, I don't know, he was tracking the receiver. Then he tried to track the ball. Then he lost track of both. And then it's just a big play and led to a touchdown. And honestly, if you take away that touchdown, we probably win that game. And we're not even in that situation where Carson Wentz foes and throw that interception at the end. And Scott Turner's play calling is just, I don't know what that was. But Bobby McCain, man, that's big time on you. You're definitely one of the biggest votes from this game. Worst to ever do it, man. Worst of all time from this game. And granted, Bobby McCain hasn't been terrible so far this season, but that was easily his worst play. And he had a pretty bad play against the Cowboys. I think he had one against the Eagles as well. Maybe both. Maybe one of those that I remember. I can't remember distinctly, but I know for a fact this play against the Titans, this game against the Titans was his worst game of the season. I mean, where do they even have him rated? They have him as a 59 9.8 overall and it felt like his tackling is what literally kept him afloat he has an 82 tackling grade without that he'd probably be a 30 or a 40 something with a lot of those other guys and that's one pro football focus grade i do agree with outside of the tackling because that's just something i'm gonna have to go look at the all 22 for but coverage wise that man had a 58.1 coverage i felt like it should be lower just off of that one big play but i guess he played moderately well outside of that play but that big play was huge and literally like probably cost us the game honestly and then second William Jackson the third man I mean to get benched I just feel like that says it all you're automatically stocked down if you get benched as a starter especially guy that we brought in as a free agent to be our starting number one corner the guy that we're paying 10 million dollars a year I mean do not be surprised I mean granted He's plenty of time to turn it around and become that true corner that we want him to be. And, and maybe this doesn't matter later on down the road. But the way things are going right now, based on the trajectory of how he's been playing this season and where it's kind of literally just gotten worse game by game, he's literally getting worse and worse and worse. Don't be surprised if we go corner high in the draft. First round, second round. I know a lot of people want my Georgia Bulldog, Keely Ringo. Granted, as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to be brutally honest. Love his athleticism. Love his traits. Love his length. Literally just body wise and athleticism and just natural ability and how he was just made as a human being perfect corner everything you ask for but he has a lot of mental stuff he needs to work on before i'm ready to spin a top pick on him just yet but don't be surprised if we replace because that saves us money that's my main point you save 10 million dollars by letting william jackson go and then you can get a top corner in the draft potentially so don't be surprised if that ends up being the move but we'll see hopefully William Jackson gets it turned around I really do because I hate to see it because he seems like such a cool guy I really like his personality and again he has all of the potential in the world I mean like I've always been saying if you could put Kendall Fuller's brain in William Jackson's body you literally have a top five corner in the NFL William Jackson has all of the traits you want but he's just i don't know iq making dumb technique mistakes grabbing on the people for no reason and sometimes i mean it just doesn't matter how fast you are physically if you're mentally behind because you just can't make that up with that athleticism there's other athletes on the other team as well it's not like william jackson's the fastest player in the nfl maybe if he was it wouldn't matter as much that he's so slow at processing but there's athletes on the other team as well so when you're slow to figure things out all of that speed doesn't really matter you already you already beat and then also, I mean, his pro football focus grade is a 35.9, so that should tell you everything you need to know. One of the lowest on the team. The only guy lower than him is John Bostic, who barely played. I think John Bostic only played like 10 snaps barely played so outside of that William Jackson was our lowest graded defender and he had a tackling grade of a 23.1 and a coverage grade of 40.7 literally abysmal his run defense grade was his highest grade easily and that was a 46.8 that's terrible but even just advanced statistics wise before he was benched he played 15 snaps five runs 10 passes he allowed catches of 11 and 9 yards on both of his targets so he was targeted twice allowed catches for both of them for an average of 10 yards yards and he missed a tackle on Derrick Henry and then after that we just didn't see him again literally benched on the sideline no injuries just chilling on the sideline helmet off cooling so he literally got benched and they moved Benjamin St. Juice outside technically to replace him and they threw Rashad Wild Goose out there to start in the slot while Benjamin St. Juice moved to the outside and Rashad Wild Goose ended up having our third highest defensive pro football focus grade which is really interesting so he made the most of his opportunity once he got in the game he ended up playing 33 snaps most snaps I believe he's ever played in an NFL game in his short career moving 
moving on offense alignment man straight up through and through i mean we just go ahead and bunch them together nick martin and andrew norwell man they were terrible respectively nick martin had a 30 grade andrew norwell had a 34.7 grade and they were both abysmal in both run blocking and pass blocking between the both of them the highest of any of those that they had was nick martin's 46.8 run blocking grade they were both terrible getting penalties even though that one nick martin hands to the face i don't really think that was a hands to the face that was kind of like a bang bang the helmet just kind of flew off it wasn't really his fault it was like a hand just ended up going up there real quick it wasn't like he was grabbing it and literally using it to block the guy so outside of that though nick martin and and, and andrew norwell were just absolutely terrible i mean andrew norwell literally had a drive where he had like a holding penalty the next play sack and then like the following drive the same thing holding penalty sack i mean literally go look at the low lights not highlights the low lights of what andrew norwell did against the titans man that was one of the worst blocking performances i've seen in a while and it's crazy that nick martin had a lower grade than him but that's probably because of all of the low snaps that man was snapping it to carson wentz's ankles carson wentz out here trying to bobble the ball he already has to be aware that there's pressure probably coming to his face and and guys are on the way because the offensive line can't block a lick right now even though they were overall slightly better against the titans than they were against the cowboys and the eagles like i mean you could just tell by the how much carson wentz was not sacked i think he was only sacked three times against the titans remember against the eagles it was like nine so like by default they were technically better but overall as a line but andrew norwell and nick martin those were two of the worst performances i've seen from this o-line as individuals this entire season sadly so Cornelius lucas to charles charles leno i'm sorry that they brought the offensive line crumbling overall as a, just a unit but man it was really bad man those two you can tell why nick martin was available to sign week three of an nfl season just off the street there's a reason he was available you can see it now tyler larson was activated to the 53 man roster off of the pup list just before that game and i'm surprised he didn't play but i guess they wanted to give him another week to kind of get ready physically so maybe to get back in the football shape so maybe he's our starting center i'm assuming after the game nick martin had he's our starting center going against the bears and nick martin is your backup at best i mean the, at the highest like at this point i think he needs to go practice squad to maybe even get released how bad he was against the titans man i mean i know they have jeffrey simmons but golly and then andrew norwell we've already seen i mean it didn't take this long we saw this a couple of weeks ago that this trey turner and andrew norwell to replace brandon sheriff and eric flowers experiment is not working go get eric flowers on the phone like i've already said if i'm eric flowers i'm not signing into the commanders unless y'all give me quarterback money the way y'all disrespecting me and then y'all want me to come back to this one and four chaos where the fans are giving up and switching teams and like the organization is just in complete chaos and disarray like you gotta pay me big money but still i don't care as a fan to ron rivera get eric flowers on the phone and just admit you were wrong man apologize if you got to man just it, do something as you know well it's not it sadiq charles has replaced trey turner quite nicely he's not brandon sheriff but at least he's not as bad as trey turner he's somewhere in the middle but andrew noel right now is terrible i don't know if we're just trying to wait to groom chris paul long enough to be able to throw him out there to start a left guard at some point but we have to have an answer outside of andrew norwell because that was one of the worst blocking performances i've ever seen the experiment is not working and then moving on to my fifth and final stock down it's got to be dax milne on punt returns man we we gotta stop this kick returns punt returns returning period i do not like dax milne there and pro football focus kind of agrees they gave him a 60.2 overall special teams grade even though everybody generally had a 60 something our highest pro football focus grade for any of our special teams player was cameron cheeseman our long snapper with a 64.5 like nobody had a good special teams grade and cam sims all the way at the bottom with a 29.5 again i'm using this as a reference but again take it with a grain of salt don't really know what to do with these grades honestly but i saw enough live with my own eyes to see that dax milne is not it on returning i mean he's making the wrong decision fair catching it when he should let it go back to the end zone at times then sometimes he lets it go back into the end zone when he should just go ahead and fair catch it and like i said already i call him an automatic fair catch because it doesn't matter whether he fair catches it or not once he gets the ball it's pretty much down where he got it that's pretty much it now granted the special teams blocking could be better kickoffs and punt return wise but 
it's on him too man he looks so sluggish his acceleration is terrible he'll make a couple of guys miss but he's just so slow it doesn't matter after he makes them miss he doesn't go anywhere vertically anyway and then when he tries to go horizontal it just looks absolutely abysmal it looks like he's running in slow motion so man we need to find a solution to this return game thing i've been one of those people that's always been questioning why we let deandre carter go to the charges i would have paid him double what they're paying him they're paying him like one or two million a year i would have gave him five just in case just take a little bit extra off the top man just do whatever you got to do keep the change we need a deandre carter back man dax Milne is safe and honestly this just perfectly sums up how this organization has gotten to this point we're conservative we play it safe we not we're not aggressive in the draft we're not aggressive in free agency and they're playing it safe by having a guy like dax Milne back there we're really the only positive is that he doesn't muff punts that's literally it outside of that he provides you no explosion he's never gonna flip field positioning ever like i said he's pretty much automatic fair catch and again i feel like that perfectly encompasses everything that's going wrong with this team we're just way too conservative and then when we need to be aggressive it seems like we're doing something we've never done before and we seem uncomfortable doing it can we just become a more aggressive franchise on and off the field just in general so that we're more comfortable in uncomfortable situations you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and we're one of those teams that's clearly not we're afraid to risk so many things we just play it safe and just hope it works out but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything Everything discussed in this video do you agree with my five stock ups and stock downs do you feel like some players that i had on the list should not have been on the list are there some players that i didn't include that you felt like should have been on the list even more of course definitely get in the comment section let me know how y'all feel about all of that and of course please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything also let me know if you want me to continue doing these five stock ups and five stock downs every week i got y'all and also man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to everybody that pulled up to the stream shouts out to the chat shouts out to everybody that donated shouts out to all the new members man i really appreciate y'all and shouts out to my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors you name me see scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out